So I'm someone who's struggled with their skin for the last 15 years. Today I want to talk about it and if you stick around until the end of the video I will be sharing with you some of the things that I did that helped. Hi. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Matty and I'm a male model and physiotherapist. Now without further ado, let's get on with the video. So let's start at the beginning. I had pretty good skin from birth until about the age of 11 or 12. I ate what I wanted, loved dairy, I loved eating ice cream, milk, cheese. This will be important for later. I washed my face twice a day with a warm towel and because I played quite a bit of sport growing up, I actually showered every day. And then I hit puberty around 12 or 13. And that's when acne hit me. At first it was just the odd pimple here and there, the odd white head. But then I remember at 15, it started creeping up on me a little bit. Something to note was that I didn't use SPF. I didn't really use moisturizer. I had this exfoliating daily wash that was by Johnson & Johnson's. It was like clean and clear. And I used it twice a day. Now bear in mind when you use an exfoliant, you're only meant to use it once every two to three days. I use this exfoliant twice every day. And if I got a pimple, I would try and scrub it off with the exfoliant, which is just absolutely horrendous. Like, don't do that. I told a dermatologist this is what I used to do, and she was just in shock, really. And of course, like most boys, I would pop my pimples when I get them, which also is a big no-no. Don't do that. Fast forward to 18, and my hormones start to get more in check, and, you know, I was exercising. I was doing Muay Thai regularly, and I did a bit of gymnastics. And I wasn't really that focused on my skincare. Like I wasn't really that bothered about it. I was eating a little bit cleaner anyway because I was trying to like lose body fat at the time. So I was eating like brown rice, sweet potatoes. I was avoiding all those refined carbs. I cut out sugars actually. And maybe that was the reason why my skin started to clear up. My acne never went away, but it was definitely more manageable. And I'll put a picture on the screen now. You should be able to see like what it looks like. It's, it's really not that bad. It was just a little bit of scarring. Fast forward again, two years to the age of 20 and I was in my second year of my undergrad in London and I had started lifting weight because I was so sick and tired of being skinny because I was really really lean when I did kickboxing. I'm 6'2 and I weighed like 72, 73 kg which is ridiculously light for my height. So I started lifting weights in the gym and I started taking creatine because there's been a lot of studies to suggest that creatine helps you get an extra rep and basically makes you stronger over a period of time. And that's when my acne really went nuts. Like it really started to get bad. And at first I thought it was a creatine. So I stopped taking the creatine, but my acne didn't go away. So pretty quickly I realized that it wasn't the creatine that was the problem. I think it was the change in hormones from starting to lift weights, basically. My testosterone levels shot up and as a result, my acne got worse. I was also consuming a lot of dairy, a lot of buttermilk spreads, a lot of butter, a lot of whey protein, whey protein bars, and ice cream. Anyway, I went to see an acne specialist to, to get my acne evaluated and treated. So this Asian doctor in London saw me, and he basically just took a look at my acne and was like, this is moderate severe acne, and it will be 150 pounds for the consultation. I'm not gonna provide you with any medication. You're gonna to have to go and pay for it yourself. Here's the prescription. And I was just like, great, telling me something like I already know. <laughs> Didn't really offer like kind of a treatment plan as such. It was just like, take these antibiotics. Here's Epiduo, whatever. A couple months after that, I went to see another doctor, cosmetic dermatologist in London. And I started getting treatment for the acne with the laser treatment and I had facials and things, whatever I needed. And I had a couple of sessions of that and they put me on like a proper skincare routine with moisturizer, oil control pads, SPF, so sun cream, and also retinol, tretinoin to take at night with an antibiotic inside the tretinoin. And so my skin did actually improve, but the issue wasn't necessarily on the outside. It wasn't external, it was what was happening inside my body with hormones and things. And I didn't really take my skincare seriously. Like after I finished those treatments with that dermatologist, I just kind of let my skincare routine slack. My acne kind of came back. I was using Epiduo, I was using moisturizer and an exfoliant, and sometimes I was using SPF, but not every day. Fast forward to 25, 26 years old, and I was working in the NHS as a full-time physiotherapist. We had to wear masks because it was COVID. And these masks really irritated my face, but also the job itself was really stressful. And I just, I love the people there, don't get me wrong, but 
I wasn't enjoying the job itself. For those of you who've never worked in healthcare, or for those of you who never worked in like retail, particularly healthcare, I think to an even greater degree, it's quite a thankless profession. You do so much, you give so much of yourself and you, you don't really get much back. So it, it's quite draining, particularly if you're more of an introvert like myself. I wasn't sleeping enough, I was overworked stressed, underpaid as well, but we're not gonna talk about that in this video. And all of these factors really flared on my acne. And so I had my delayed graduation in 2022, around that June time. So it was summer, the sun was out, I wasn't wearing SPF. And I went back to Southampton, which is where I was gonna graduate in St. Mary's Stadium. And graduation day comes along and I get some photos taken and I did not realize how bad my acne was. It was really bad, it had flared up. It wasn't even mild moderate, it was moderate severe acne, it had really flared up. We got another opinion from a dermatologist and they said the same thing, they said it was moderate severe acne, which is just fantastic. Just a little side note to say that this had really affected my confidence at the time and my perception of my own self-worth and yeah, that's the reason why I had really long hair because I wanted to just cover my face basically. So I was told that I might have to go on Roaccutane or isotretinoin, which for those of you who don't know, it, it does work. It, it's a very strong medication that clears up your acne and it works by shrinking the, the oil producing glands in your skin. But there are some side effects and one of the big side effects was that it affects your joints and as someone who did gymnastics and heavy weight training at the time, I didn't want to compromise my joints at all. But also there's been some studies to suggest that it also can affect mental health. And as someone who has struggled with their mental health in the past, I didn't really want to repeat of that. I chose not to go on Romacutane. At this point, I was like, this is pretty dreadful, something has to change. I feel like we only change when we have no other choice, like when we're given an ultimatum, when we're pushed to breaking point. When we hit our lowest point, we are open to the greatest change. So I started a proper skincare routine. Now, if you guys are interested in what that is, then I've made a bunch of videos on my channel already, so I'll link them in the description below. But I started using cleanser, exfoliant, moisturizer, SPF, retinol, and these things did help with my skin. I also eliminated dairy from my diet, which I believe that I'm slightly dairy intolerant. I've not had any formal blood tests, but I'm sure that's what they would find. And my skin started to clear up. As well as the fact that in the hospital, we no longer had to wear masks. So I ditched those because I was like, I'm not wearing a mask if I don't have to. And the last thing that I did was I ended up leaving the NHS. That was also a really pivotal moment in my life where my stress levels decreased. As I said, my skin became a lot clearer. I had fewer breakouts. However, I still had blemishes. I still had acne scars from the days when I used to pop my pimples and try and scrape them off. I wanted to get treatment for that too because there's only so much retinol can do. It does help kind of clear your skin and remove those scars and blemishes and fine lines, but there are limitations to retinol as good as it is. So I had combined Picasure laser and microneedling and I had three treatments. And as you can kind of see, I mean, I have the odd, I have a pimple there and I have a pimple there, but those are just whiteheads that have kind of passed already and they'll go away and I just need to not not pick them, not pop them. My skin is so much smoother, the texture is so much better and maybe in the next couple months I'll go for another session as well. I've had a good experience with the microneedling and laser. It was not very comfortable but sometimes no pain, no gain. There's also an anti-aging effect as well so when you have it done it kind of causes the collagen to proliferate under your skin and as a result it helps remove fine lines and wrinkles. Not that I had wrinkles in the first place but for anyone who struggles with acne scarring I definitely recommend microneedling and Pikachore laser treatment. And I'm so happy with my skin, it's still work in progress. And my whole journey, my struggle with acne, with breakouts, with scarring, with mental health issues that it's made me go through. This is why I'm so interested in and passionate about skincare. Now, I hope this video has been helpful to you and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. I'm on my own, broken along. I feel the rain crashing down. All around this empty town. I'm searching for the lost and found